One of the best free Microsoft Teams apps recently received an update and it brings with it significant enhancements. Now the updates app allows you to create and share lightweight data collection forms directly within Microsoft Teams. Now in this video, I will be covering what's new in this updated version of the updates app. And toward the end of the video, I will show you how you can create your own data collection forms from scratch. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, if you've never accessed the updates app before, you want to click on the apps button in the app rail, and then you want to search for updates. Next, you want to go ahead and click on the add button for the updates app tile. And then you want to click on the add button. This will install the updates app in your Microsoft Teams desktop app. Now, the first thing that you might notice is the user interface for the updates app has been enhanced and is now much cleaner and more modern. Now, the new user interface features four major sections. First, at the very top of the UI, you have the explore all templates section. This is where you can come to actually access the out of the box templates and configure them or even build your own update forms from scratch. Now, if you want to preview one of these out of the box templates, you can hover your cursor over that template card and then click on the preview button and it will show you the actual update form. You can see here some sample data to help give you an idea of what this update form will look like. And if you actually want to configure one of these out of the box templates, you can click on the use template button. And this is going to bring you into the edit form menu where you can actually configure the form fields and where you can customize the settings. Now, later in this tutorial, I will walk through the process of creating a new update form from scratch just to demonstrate what that process looks like using the new version of this app. The next section of the new UI is the needing your updates section. This section will display a list of updates that have been requested of you. You can see here that the daily update is going to display by default because this update request is available at any time. And you can see here that there is also a pending update that has specifically been requested of me. Now, if I click on one of these, it will bring me into the update form where I can actually fill out and provide my response. Now, the next section of the user interface is the review updates section. Now, this section displays a visual summary of the updates that have been submitted where you're cited as the reviewer. Now, I'll click on the show all button to display additional updates and I will scroll down and click into the daily update. Now, you can see here that this provides a nice clean summary view of the different updates that have been submitted. And one of the new features that are actually called out in the product documentation is the ability to switch between the question view and the list view. Now this is the list view. And if I click on the question view, this will display the responses provided to the questions included in the update form for all of the submissions of this particular form. Now you can see here, I can just scroll down and I can see the responses for each of these questions. Now, if you wanna switch back to the default, you can just click on the list view. And again, that will display the full form and you can easily toggle between the different entries that are featured here on the left-hand side. Now, there are also two other new features displayed here. And the first is the ability to provide comments on updates. Now you can see here that you can actually post a comment on a particular update entry. Now you can see here I've typed in a message and I'll go ahead and click on the send button. And you can see here that that message was posted. And you can also like the updates, which is a nice little touch to promote collaboration and acknowledge that you've actually read the update. Now, if you're finding this video helpful and you want to learn more about how to use the full capabilities included in the Microsoft Teams Updates app, I do have another tutorial that provides a much more in-depth walkthrough. I've included a link to that video in the description below, or you can just click that card in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Now, the last section of the Updates app interface is the received, submitted, and my requests. Now this section will display a full list of all of the updates or forms that have been submitted where you have been cited as a reviewer 
And this is actually one of the new features in this updated version of the app is that you can actually export the updates data that you have access to to Excel directly from the app. Now you'll notice on the right hand side of the screen, you do have the ability to quickly filter between the different update forms that have been created in the app. So you can see here, I could select any one of these. I can also filter by the individual submitter and I can provide a date range. And once you're ready to do this, you can go ahead and click on the export button. And you can see here that this data has been exported. Now I've opened up this export for demo purposes and you can see here that it includes the submission time, the individual that submitted the update and it's also going to include the actual update form questions and the values that were entered into the form questions. Now, a really important note and one of the most asked questions that I received on my previous tutorial is how do you disable update requests for forms that you've built and workflow that you've programmed? Now, to do that, you want to click into the My Requests tab. And again, this will show you a list of the requests that you have created. And you'll notice here that there is a status icon. If you want to disable an update request, you want to find the update that is active. You want to click on the three dots under the actions column, and you want to go ahead and click disable. This will ensure that your update requests are no longer being sent to individuals at that cadence that you set. Now, one of the biggest changes to the updates app pertains to where the actual data is stored. In the previous iteration of this app, the underlying data was actually stored in Microsoft Forms. In the updated version of this app, the data has now been moved to Microsoft Dataverse. Now you can access that data in Dataverse through Microsoft Power Apps. And in the next part of this video, I'm gonna walk you through how you can do that. Now to access the updates app data, you want to navigate to Power Apps and you want to click on tables in the sidebar. Next, you want to click on the all button and next you want to search for report. Now there are several tables that store all of the data processed through the updates app and all of those tables start with MSMWT. So you can see here that there are several different tables. There is report, report comment, report definition, et cetera. Now I will just click into the report table and you can see here that there are several records and I've highlighted one row here and you can see here that this preview text column for this particular record is storing information from an update that I submitted through the updates app. Now, if you do want to understand the relationships between these tables, you can simply check one of these tables and then you can click on the advanced dropdown and click on the show dependencies menu option. And this will display a list of the columns featured on this particular table, the object type, and then the dependent table. So this will ultimately allow you to preview the schema so that you can then build out reports or build out integrations if you have a requirement to do so. All right, next I'll demonstrate how you can create a form from scratch. To do this, you wanna click on start from blank. And the first thing that I will do is give this request a title. To do that, you wanna click on the pencil icon. Now you can see here, I've given this a title. Next, I'll go ahead and change the icon for this form. To do that, click on the icon. And you can see here that you can choose a color and you can also select an icon or an emoji. Now I'll go ahead and select this rocket ship and then I'll click save. And you can see here that the icon has been updated. The next thing that I will do is paste in a description here. Now you can see here I've pasted in some text and this is good to ensure that your users know exactly what this form is for. Now to add questions to the form, you wanna click on the add question button and this will add the questions to your form canvas and you can change the different response type by clicking into the drop down menu. Now, what I will do is I will add one of each of these different types of fields so that you can see what they look like when you're building out your forms. Now, every question requires that you actually insert a question stem and then you can also provide additional text in the form of a subtitle if you want. You can see here that it reads optional. 
Now you can also set your questions to required or not required simply by toggling the required button on or off. Now you can see here I've added a short text type question and next I'll add a long text question to this form. Now to do that, click into the question type field and then select rich text. Now you can see here for rich text fields, the text box is larger and you can also apply formatting, add bulleted lists, hyperlinks, etc. Next, I'll add a multi-select dropdown field to this update form. To do that, click into the question type and then select multiple choice. And you can see here, this will add additional option fields to this particular question. You wanna go ahead and populate these now I've added all of my options to the form, and if you'd like to include an other, you can select this option here, and that will allow your users to check other and then input a custom value. Next, I'll add a single select dropdown. And again, this operates the same as a multi-select, except with this question, users can only select one option. And again, you can see here that the question was added. Next, I'll add a numeric type field to this update form. To do that, you want to select number. And with this question type, you also have the option to input restrictions. Now to do this, you want to toggle this on. And you can see here in the dropdown that you can actually set parameters around what kind of values are entered in this field. Now I will leave this to greater than zero, which means when users are filling this out, they can only input a number that is greater than zero. And last, I will add a date question to this update form. And you can see here that the date question has been added. Now that is how you can build out the form questions. The next step is to configure the settings for this update form. Now the first option here is who needs to submit this request. And you have two options. You can either make this form available to specific users in your organization, or you can leave it such that anybody with the link can access the form. Now, if you want to expose this form only to specific users, you want to select this first option here, and then you want to actually specify those individuals in this submitters field. Now you can see here, I've added three submitters, and that means that again, only these individuals will be able to see and submit updates using this form. Next, you want to set who can actually review the responses submitted to this particular form. Now, by default, it will add you in to this field. And if you would like to add any additional individuals, then you just want to place your cursor in this field and select them here. Now, the next step is to configure the workflow for this form. Now, the workflow is essentially a due date and recurrence. Now, by default, it will be set to available at any time, meaning that a user can actually come into this form and submit it at any time. If you click into this field, you can see here that you have the option to make this a one-time collection. You can make this a daily collection, weekly, monthly, etc. Now, I'll just click into one of these options here, and that's going to bring up the set due date and recurrence menu where you can then build out your specific recurrence. And the last two options here are whether you would like file attachments. Now, if you toggle this on, what this means is that users will have to attach a file before they can actually submit the update. If you turn this off, they will have the option of adding attachments, but it will not be mandatory. And the last option here specifies whether you would like to provide your users with the ability to edit their submissions after they enter them. Now, I'll go ahead and leave this on once you're ready to publish this form, you want to click on the publish button. And you can see here that this request has been published. Now, let's say you publish the form and you want to make changes to it after the fact. What you want to do is navigate to the updates landing page. You want to scroll right to the bottom. You want to click into the my requests page. Then you want to find the form that you just created. And if you move your cursor all the way to the actions button, you want to click on the edit option. And this will bring you back into the settings page where you can come in and adjust any of the settings that you originally configured. Now there are several other free Microsoft Teams apps, including a project management app, an inspection app, an issue reporting app, an employee idea app, and more. I do have tutorials showcasing how you can access and use those apps, and I've included links to those videos in the description of this one below. 
So that's it. In this video, I showcase the new Microsoft Teams Updates app. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my playlist that features over a hundred Microsoft Teams tutorials. I've included a link to that playlist in the description below. I'm Louis Acobelis. See you in the next video.